Framer versus Webflow, which is the best no-code website builder in 2024? Framer and Webflow are popular no or low-code website development tools. And while Webflow has been operating since 2013 as a no-code web builder, Framer actually started out in 2014 as a prototyping tool. While the early version of Framer allowed you to build and design website prototypes, you could never publish a fully functioning website like you could with Webflow. And then everything changed. Framer added publish. With the addition of turning your easy to build web prototypes into final published products, Framer became something compelling, combining Webflow's capabilities with Figma's simplicity. That said, Webflow's functionality still vastly outperforms Framer in several categories, but here's why they're both great options for designing your website in 2024. Let's start with the CMS or adding collections and say blogs. Collections and template based content rely on a CMS or content management system. CMS based websites are everywhere across the web. Any blog you use relies on a content management system to create a database and display this content on custom design templates. My blog, for example, features tutorials that are using Framer's CMS collections to automatically populate templates that I've designed in Framer. Webflow CMS works similarly and allows you to create collections of items which populate custom design templates. So where do the two differ? The two platforms have minor differences in how the CMS works and how it's set up and how different collections can have relations to one another. So both technically allow for multiple collections to have relations with one another. For example, a blog collection might want to point to a categories collection in order to help organize the content of your website into categories. That said, Webflow CMS is the only one of the two that allows you to set up relations when you set up your CMS collections. So let's give this a little bit of context. When you create a CMS collection with either tool, you set up fields. In the case of, say, this video, if we were to make this a blog post, it might include a title, the content itself in the form of text, an image, and a brief description. Now, both platforms allow you to add various types of fields from images, text, rich text, colors, drop down selections, and you know many more. But that said, Webflow is the only one with a field type for pointing to other collections. For example, setting up the blog collection to connect posts with specific categories. Now, there is a simple workaround to achieve this cross collection referencing with Framer that works well, so long as you only need to connect with one item at a time. But if you ever need to reference multiple authors or multiple categories or multiple of any collection, it's just currently impossible with Framer. Moreover, the solution requires you to remember the slug of the author's pages, so the end of the URL. Webflow is a completely different story. So with Webflow, you can connect CMS items with one or more items from another collection. But aside from relations, both platforms do a really good job of allowing you to display, filter, and limit CMS items on your website designs, and are both excellent options for building a CMS or content management system. Next, let's talk about development experience that you need and the ease of use for the two platforms in order to use them. So designing truly responsive websites requires understanding web design principles like box model, CSS, flex, grid, regardless of which software you choose. And while Framer and Webflow are both low to no code, understanding HTML, CSS, and some JavaScript beforehand might give you a head start. But that said, coding is, you know, it's not necessary. You don't need to have any experience to use either tool. Webflow is a visual coding tool that generates HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for you while you use its more user-friendly interface. And while the same is true of Framer, the terminology and styling options are more approachable for designers than developers. Because Webflow styling options are all mainly based on CSS code. So regarding the ease of use, Framer, I would say, is best suited to designers. As it's easy to use, drag and drop interface is probably comparable to Figma. Webflow seems to suit developers better than designers, as much of the experience is based on coding visually. Next, let's talk about e-commerce and selling products. So while both allow you to use third-party tools and the CMS to create a functioning store, only Webflow currently has inbuilt support for e-commerce. For an extra monthly cost, Webflow provides full support for running a store without the need for external plugins or third-party integrations. It can be a little pricey for those just starting out, but design customization is best in class. If Framer integrated e-commerce, that would be, you know, that would significantly increase the number of sites for which it would be relevant to, to be used for and would be, I'd say, a logical next step for Framer's development. But if you don't need a basket-based checkout where users can simultaneously purchase multiple items, then Framer's CMS work quite nicely with, uh, you know, Stripe checkout links or third-party tools like ConvertKit to achieve a rudimentary store. Next, let's talk about SEO and site performance. So regarding SEO or search engine optimization, we want to consider the variables that lead to great user experiences for everyone. That means websites that aren't 
just accessible, but fast. And over the past few years, I've worked on projects with various companies, my own brands in Webflow and Framer. And beyond that, I've used custom coded websites that I've built myself and I've used other website builders. And hands down, I have never experienced SEO statistics as impressive as Framer is straight out the box. So I record near perfect page speed, site performance, accessibility, and SEO scores using Google Lighthouse every single time I use Framer. And while both tools provide great on-page SEO and support open graph data, Webflow's SEO performance just does not match Framer's. Next, we're going to talk about built-in GDPR compliant analytics. So with Framer, using their simplified page view analytics, you can track user sources and page views with a GDPR compliant method built into the software. While this is limited to page views and source data and leaves many questions unanswered, Framer's inbuilt analytics has more to offer in the long run, I would say, before being able to replace traditional options. That said, Framer also allows you to integrate your Google Analytics account with a ready-to-go solution for the GDPR and the need to collect consent. Webflow relies entirely on third-party analytics tools like Google Analytics to track page views and does not have much support for cookies, consent, and the GDPR beyond warning you about using Google Fonts. So next, let's talk about the pricing and cost. So Webflow and Framer separate their pricing into two categories, one focused on a site plan and the other for editors and workspaces. They also, like everywhere nowadays, offer discounted prices for an annual plan. Both offer a limited free plan, allowing you to publish your site to their own domains, i.e. yoursite.webflow.io or yoursite.framer.website. I would say for the majority of people that want a custom website, one of the paid plans makes more sense. So for Webflow, your price is going to start at $18 monthly, but this doesn't include any support for the CMS. If you're going to need CMS, you're going to need to be paying about $29 a month. And if you've got a bigger site of 20, uh, sorry, of 10,000 form submissions or 10,000 CMS items a month, you need to pay $49 a month. And if you're building an e-commerce site, you're starting at $42 a month with CMS support. But then if you need to get that bigger, if you need 5,000 store items or 10,000 CMS items, then you need to pay upwards from there. And to collaborate and work as a team and work with other people, it has additional costs for the workspace that starts at $28 a month per user. So that can add up and that can get quite pricey. Framers plans start at eight pounds a month for a tiny site featuring only a home and 404 page for up to a thousand monthly visits. Visitors. If you need a CMS collection on multiple pages, which is most users, you'll pay £15 a month. If you need multiple CMS collections or more than 150 pages or perhaps more than 10,000 visitors a month, you'll need to pay £25 a month. And if you work as a team or collaborate in any way, you'll pay £18 per month for every additional designer. So that doesn't include you as the account holder. Next, let's talk about editorial mode or edit mode. This is where Webflow I think excels. So when it comes to modern websites, especially larger editorial sites, they rely on collaboration and collaborators will not always be technically minded and they might not know anything about web development. Therefore, editing a site's copy and editorial content should be easy. Webflow's edit mode is an absolute game changer here. So your editors can access an edit window that lets them create optimized CMS pages and edit web copy links and images without breaking any of the design or development. Framer falls short here and has yet to provide a means for external content editors to alter the site's content outside of the main designer. Next, let's talk about components and reusable elements. So components, in my opinion, make Framer shine. Both Webflow and Framer support custom reusable assets or components. So think of the navigation menus you plan to use on every page. Why design it on every page when you can make it a reusable component that updates across all instances every time you edit it? That's what we call a component. So you can turn anything you wish to reuse into a component and create fields and variables that you can edit per instance. So let's imagine you created a button component to drag and drop into your pages where needed. The text and the URL of that button will likely need to be different for every single time you use it. That's where you use properties to make changes to individual instances of components. Set the text and link to a property and you can make each component an instance behave and appear differently, among other things like colors. So where does Framer go beyond? In my opinion, variants. Variants are basically ways that you can change to and from different states, if you like, of a component. So users can switch between variants on scroll, allowing for really impressive and complex animations. Other variants offered include hover and press states to set up work when the users, uh, sorry, set up to work when the users hover over or press on like on that on a component. So you can set components to basically change based on screen sizes, on scroll animations, or on user interactions. And it's hard to describe the powerful reach and applications of components, but if you give it a go and you can sort of see the way that switching between variants can have a, a lot of applications for some re really incredible designs. I think you'll understand why I'm more excited about Framer when it comes to components than Webflow, despite the fact that they both offer support. 
Next, let's talk about interactive animations and elements. So both Webflow and Framer provide robust methods of animating and making your site interactive. Both support scroll and parallax effects through to more complex user interactions and looping transformations. Workflow and Framer's UIs are probably the only differences here. There may be a few use cases in which one software is better than the other, but both can achieve modern interactions and impressive animations. If interactivity and animations are your primary concern, then either software is a great choice. Multi-user collaboration. So let's talk about how Framer and Webflow allow collaboration in any form, right? So while Webflow, I think, still needs to catch up, Framer allows for seamless Figma-like multi-user collaboration. So Webflow's edit mode, not the design mode, is an excellent example of how Webflow nails certain aspects of team collaboration. But despite this, collaborating with other users in the designer is generally quite challenging. One designer at a time can be in control, which can be quite limiting compared to the gold standard, which in my opinion is Figma. Next, let's talk about some extra features of Webflow, such as logic and membership. So Webflow, like, like Framer, is constantly announcing new features. But that said, two of the most significant recent features added to Webflow are memberships and logic. These have specific use cases, but are exciting tools nonetheless. So memberships allows you to gate content to specific users and have logins and sign up flows. Whereas Logic is a step beyond the website builder, so working with server-side Logic to let you interact with forms, APIs, databases, and so much more. So which is more popular with clients? Over the past decade, I've noticed a tremendous spike in interest in Webflow, having used it in its early days. From a niche to an industry leader, Webflow soared to new heights year on year. Many will find comparing Framer and Webflow to be laughable because of the broad toolset Webflow has grown to provide for clients and for designers and developers. That said, similar to how I saw Webflow spike in popularity, Framer is making incredible gains in brand awareness and increasing numbers of clients are asking for Framer developments. So while Webflow may be a client favorite, I think Framer might steal the heart of the designer. So in conclusion, which website development software is best? While I put this together, I'm not gonna lie, I really struggle to underpin why. I prefer Framer despite the features that, that Webflow brings that supersedes it, right? I mean, the truth is I love using them both, but something about Framer lately has stolen my top spot. On the one hand, the SEO performance of Framer sites could be the answer, but so too could be the speed at which Framer is allowing me to develop websites. Month-long projects have become week-long projects. And while it's a challenge to answer the question of which is best, if you need an easy designer with a publish button, think Framer. If you need a feature-rich e-commerce or complex logic-based site, think Webflow. If you need to collaborate in a designer, think Framer. If you need to collaborate with editorial content, think Webflow. I really hope you've enjoyed this and I hope it's helped in some way. Make sure that if you're new to the channel that you've subscribed, give this video a like and drop a comment below. Let me know what you're using. Um, I've also put a link in the description for you to get started with either Webflow or Framer. It's completely up to you. Um, and there's also a promo code um, specifically for my followers there to give you three months free, I believe, on the Framer Pro monthly, uh, sorry, yearly, on the yearly plan for Framer. I think you get three months free. So there's a, there's a code down there in the description. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.